Hi, I'm Perry from Cheese Plus. Um, I'm talking to you today because um, you may have received one of my mystery boxes. Um, usually, um, I go and see restaurants and um, other people who love cheese and talk to them through my cheese selection, but obviously I can't do that in lockdown. So what I've decided to do is put together a box, which you don't know about until it arrives at your door, um, of kind of the cheese that I'll be eating at the weekend. So um, this is what you've got in your box. Open that up for you. So there's a little note on the front from me, but you can read that when you receive yours. And then we've got it in a in a pouch, which we're guaranteed for it to be chilled for 48 hours. Okay. And then you have your paperwork here, which is essentially the cheese tasting notes to help you through all your uh, cheeses that you receive in the box. And some cheese care notes of how to look after your cheese and um, how to taste it. Now I've just got these out of the fridge. Remember to get them up to a room temperature before you start eating them. So unpack them, wait patiently. Um, this is some cheese paper for you to either put it on the side and use it as a cheese board or wrap your cheeses up when you're done with them because this is the best way to store cheese. So we begin with our first cheese, which is uh, Tumworth, which is made by Stacey Hedges in Hampshire. And it's known as one of the best camemberts in the world, as said by Raymond Blanc, a French person saying that. It's um, unpasteurized. Now you can bake this for uh, on 180 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, and then it will. you can use some crusty bread but you can um, have it as a normal cheese. As you see already, this has been out for a little while and already it's got a really nice paste on it. Now the flavors that you'd be getting on here are mainly the typical camembert flavors, which is um, cabbage-y kind of vegetal. And obviously the, the texture of it is very, very unctuous. The next one that we have here is uh, Westcombe cheddar, which is one of my favorite cheddars, which is made by Tom Calver down in uh, Somerset. Um, and this is an unpasteurized cow's milk cheese. And basically where it's more artisan, um, you're just gonna get longer notes. You notice most of your cheddars that you get maybe in your supermarkets, they're kind of a short experience, where this is extremely long. So it's still a little bit cold here, but you can see it's got a really nice texture to it. And um, they call this the five mile cheddar because you'd be tasting five miles down the road. So out front, it's got a really nice tang, and then after a little bit of time, it will develop into some savory kind of brothy notes. And then we have a wash rind cheese, which is cow's milk, Jersey milk, and it's made by Juliana um, in Somerset. And uh, it's a wash rind cheese. So basically they wash this cheese in a brine um, over four, four to five um, weeks. And this is modeled on a, a French cheese, which is called Reblochon. Now this, um, a lot of people think it should be unctuous and uh, runny in texture, but it's not, it's quite solid. And it's got a really nice nutty taste and very, very buttery in flavor. And you can see the pinkness of the rind is indicated by the washing. This one is very smelly. Um, most washed rind cheeses are, like um, you know, um, Stinking Bishop and things like that. The next cheese you have is our very own cheese, which is called the Duke, which we're very proud of. Um, and it's uh, raw milk, uh, cow's milk. And it's got this really nice velvety texture and this really nice rind as well on it. Um, so if I cut this one open, this one is really smooth, really nice. And you can see it's kind of like a gorgonzola, not too much bluing in this one. So it should be quite gentle. Now what you can get as well on this is a little bit of bitterness. If you're not into the bitterness, cut off the rind and, rind and eat the paste all the rinds on the cheeses you can eat today. The next one we have is Bosworth Ash, which is made in Staffordshire. And this is like a traditional St. Maur, like a French type. So it's a goat's cheese, which is rolled in ash and um, then just matured. And this has a really beautiful white, bright paste. So this is your goat's cheese. And it's got a really nice paste. It's very thick and dense in, in uh, texture. Now, a lot of people laugh at me when I say it's got those goatee notes, but 
how do you describe goatiness, I suppose? So, um, so yeah, it's very, um, not too goaty up front, but then lemony kind of tangs afterwards, traditionally what you would get with a, a goat cheese. Um, and then it's covered in this ash, and that controls uh, the kind of uh, acidity of the cheese over time, and it's a technique that cheese makers have been using over many of years. And then uh, I just threw in some free biscuits for you guys, because what's cheese without biscuits, um, you know, when you can't have a um, spoon them out. So um, thank you for buying my mystery box. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, usually when I do these things, I can talk to people and they say, oh, do you know what? I don't really like pongy cheeses or I don't like goaty cheeses. And I can kind of change that, but obviously I can't. So the only thing that I've done is what am I eating this weekend? And this is what uh, we'll be eating this weekend on our cheese board. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and um, stay safe on your um, lockdown and hopefully this cheese makes it a bit better. Thank you.